Julia, are you crying? Mom, it's none of your business. What happened to your face? Mom, leave me alone. Who did this? I'm reporting it. No, you can't. I deserve this. Besides, he loves me. He is just correcting me for what I did wrong. Meet Julia, a bright, curious 19-year-old girl living in a small town where life is quiet and predictable. Her days were filled with school, homework, and helping her mother around the house. But like many young girls, Julia dreamed of adventure, romance, and a life beyond the boundaries of her hometown. One afternoon, as she walked home from school, she noticed a slick car parked by the side of the road. Leaning against it was a man, older than her by a few years, with a charming smile that made her heart flatter. He introduced himself as Bob and began to make small talk. He was well-dressed, polite, and attentive. He spoke to her in a way that no one had ever done before. Over the next few weeks, Bob began to appear more frequently, offering to give Julia rides home, bringing her small gifts, and eventually taking her out to expensive restaurants, something she had never experienced before. He was everything she thought she wanted, handsome, generous, and attentive. When he handed her money, Telling her it was just a little something for her to treat herself, she felt like she was living in a dream. One evening, Julia did not come home. Her mother called her cell phone but got no answer. She called Julia's friend and learned she had gone out with a young man. She called Julia's phone again but still no answer. That night, she could not sleep. She stayed up all night praying for Julia. Then she heard a knock on the door. It was Julia. Where are you coming from at this time, Julia? Mom, relax. How can I relax when I didn't know where you were? It's now after 1 a.m. I need some answers. Mom, I am an adult. I can take care of myself. What is the name of the young man you went out with? Where does he live? Have you met his parents? Why so many questions? Mom, I can take care of myself. I am a big girl. Julia, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. And I didn't. I am 19. At least I didn't have a child when I was 14. Julia's mother felt insulted. Her eyes filled with pain. She locked the door and finally went to sleep. The relationship between Julia and Bob strengthened. Julia refused to introduce Bob to her mother. Although her mother warned her repeatedly about staying out late at night, she continued with her disrespectful behavior. Julia was happy. Every week she got gifts from Bob. She went to parties and expensive restaurants. She finally found the love of her life, the love her mother could never find. One evening, Julia stayed over at school for a group presentation. She had the phone on silent because she didn't want to disrupt the presentation. After the presentation, she saw that Bob had called her 25 times. Bob was hungry. What is wrong with you, Julia? Don't you know that you should always answer when I call? But I, I told you I had a group presentation this afternoon. It does not matter, Julia. Never disrespect me again. That evening, Bob physically abused Julia. After everything had calmed down, he took her home. Julia, are you crying? Mom, it's none of your business. What happened to your face? Mom, leave me alone. Who did this? I'm reporting it. No, you can't. I deserve this. Besides, he loves me. He is just correcting me for what I did wrong. Julia, he doesn't love you. Yes, he does. Bob is good to me. He's just upset, that's all. Julia was young and in love. She ignored the warning from her mother. She was convinced that Bob truly cared for her. 
During the following week, Bob gave her a promise ring and an elegant white dress. Julia was flattered, her face lit with smiles, as the man of her dreams assured her that he wouldn't lay his hands on her again. Julia's mother was shocked when Julia approached her. Mom, I'm moving out. Here is the money that you paid for my first year in college. Julia, where did you get this kind of money from? That's none of your business, Mom. Now I don't owe you anything. What am I going to tell your brother and sister? Tell them the truth, Mom. I moved out to live with Bob. So what about college, Julia? I don't need college anymore, Mom. I have Bob and I am carrying his child. What? Before you start with your scolding, he told me to move in with him. Julia, where are you going to live? Mom, stop worrying. I can take care of myself. Besides, Bob has promised to marry me. Julia, please, give me your address. Goodbye, Mom. Julia. Julia's mother cried, but she had to face the fact that her daughter, whom she had when she was 14, had her own life to live and her own mistakes to make. Julia never calls and never visits her mother. The only time her mother hears from her is when she calls, and most of the time, it is Bob who answers the phone. Julia could only talk for a minute or two, then Bob would end the conversation. Julia's mother prayed that God would change Bob's heart and make him the perfect husband that Julia seeks. Julia was always in and out of the hospital due to the constant physical abuse from Bob. Bob didn't care that Julia was pregnant. Anytime he got upset, he would deal with her just the same. And afterwards, he would apologize and make it up with gifts and lovely presents. One day, Bob came home from work. But Julia was not home. She was in an advanced state of her pregnancy. Bob called her and she told him that she was visiting her college friend. Bob went there and saw Julia talking with her girlfriend. He also saw a young man standing in the kitchen. The young man brought a cup of fruit juice to Julia and immediately Bob got angry. He thought that the young man was Julia's new lover. He kicked the juice out of Julia's hand and started hitting her until she fell to the ground. The young man intervened, but he was no match to the high-tempered, infuriated Bob. Bob was out of control. Although Julia was lying on the ground helpless, he continued inflicting wounds to her body. He stopped and looked at Julia's motionless body. Without thinking, he quickly dragged her into the car and sped away. Julia's friend immediately called her mother and told her about the incident. They reported the matter to the relevant authorities. A search went out to find Julia and Bob, but it was unsuccessful. A search was made of the apartment where they lived, but it was vacant. The search was called off after a month because nobody knew the whereabouts of Bob or Julia. Julia's mother cried. She questioned where she had gone wrong as a mother. She called Julia's phone, but it went straight to voicemail. The only memory she now has of her daughter is the torn picture hanging on the wall. What happened to Julia? And who is that young man who gave her the fruit juice? Watch part two to find out.